This handsome fellow is Thing from the Adams Family, or from Wednesday, if you prefer. I printed this, scaled up to the full build height of the Cheetetech X Max 3 in just over six hours. So this 3D printer can print big things fast, and we'll find out more about it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hello, 3D printing friends, and welcome back. Today, we're getting a look at the Cheaty Tech X Max 3. Big thanks to Cheaty Tech for sending this over so I could show it to you and give you my initial impressions of it. So, the X Max 3 is a big, fully enclosed Core XY 3D printer running Clipper. The shell around the printer is injection molded plastic, but it does have a rigid metal internal frame. The front door and the removable lid are clear plastic. It has a 5 inch color touchscreen. It has a build volume of 325 millimeters on X and Y and 315 millimeters on Z. Cheaty Tech claims a print speed up to 600 millimeters per second, although the Cheaty Slicer software tends to slice for printing at about 300 millimeters per second. It has resonance compensation and pressure advance to produce high quality prints at speed. It has a direct drive extruder with a 9.5 to 1 gear ratio to four-speed 1.75 millimeter filament down through a high temp all-metal hot end and out a 0.4 millimeter copper alloy nozzle. In the box, Cheaty Tech includes a second hot end, this one with a 0.4 millimeter hardened steel nozzle so you can print abrasive materials too. These hot ends use cylindrical ceramic heater cores that can reach a maximum of 350 degrees Celsius. The printer's bed is a six millimeter thick slab of aluminum that can reach 120 degrees Celsius. The bed has embedded magnets and the build surface is a double-sided textured spring steel flex plate. Having a flex plate makes removing models super easy. The enclosed build chamber has active heating and a chamber air circulation fan with an activated carbon air filter. Cheaty Tech says the chamber can reach 65 degrees Celsius. Some high temperature materials can warp or crack along the layer lines during a print if they're not in a heated chamber, so that's a plus. The spool holder mounts at the back of the printer, but interestingly, the printer also includes a filament dry box. It's not an active heated filament dryer but it holds a desiccant pack and a spool of filament and has a cover that seals it up. And that can help keep the more hygroscopic filaments, such as carbon fiber infused nylon, dry while you print with them. The X-Max 3 also features a filament runout sensor. When it comes to networking, the printer includes both wired ethernet and Wi-Fi. Software-wise, the Cheaty Slicer software is heavily based on a recent edition of Prusa Slicer. Cheaty Slicer also has a built-in web viewer that lets you interact with Clipper's web interface, Fluid, without having to switch to a web browser. When you open the box, one of the first things to greet you is a small quick start guide that walks you through the steps of unboxing and setting up the printer. I found it to be clear and easy to understand with tons of color images to show you what to do. Also in the box are tools, wrenches, scrapers, screwdrivers, Allen keys, that sort of thing. But sadly, no flush cutters. That's right, while the printer includes clipper, it does not include clippers. There's also an ethernet cable, a power cable, spare parts, anti-vibration rubber feet, and a flash drive. The flash drive contains a PDF copy of the quick start guide, some pre-sliced models, and the Cheaty Slicer software for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So after setting up the printer and installing the slicer, you'll be ready to start printing. So speaking of that, here are some of the things that I printed with the X-Max 3. The first thing I printed was the 17 minute 3D Benchy that's already in the printer's file list. Not counting the time taken to heat the bed and nozzle and probe the bed, the printer did in fact produce a Benchy in less than 18 minutes. Is it the best Benchy in the world? No, no it is not. However, it is a commendable effort. These sliced for speed, not for quality benchies are designed to produce a BSO or benchy shaped object in the minimum amount of time. Even with that speed though, I don't see any ringing artifacts. So the printer's resonance compensation feature is doing its job. 
For contrast, here's a Benchy I sliced using the 0.2 millimeter fine print settings in the Chidi Slicer software. This printed in about 35 minutes, so about twice the time as the Speed Benchy. But it produced a much higher quality result. It looks great and I don't see any ringing on the model. Places where there were little gaps on the pre-sliced Benchy don't have that problem on this one, and the surface quality of the print is really good. Next, here's another model that was pre-sliced and pre-loaded on the pre-enter, I mean the printer. It's a fidget cube thing with print-in-place hinges. It prints in about an hour. It's kind of fun to play with. You can continually fold it in on itself. It's a pretty good looking print, and all of its little hinges work great. Now, here's the herringbone planetary gear that I downloaded from printables.com. I sliced this one using the same settings I did with that blue Benji, and this came out just as good. All the little herringbone gears mesh properly, and the layers are beautifully stacked. It's got a nice, smooth feel to it. There's one line on it here, and that's the Z seam where each layer stops and starts. Up next, Adam's Family Thing from designer JS Studio. I downloaded this from Printables too. Again, using the same settings, but this time I used Lightning Infill to cut down on filament use and time spent printing. And I did that because I scaled this up to the maximum build height. Thing here printed in 6 hours, 15 minutes, and came out pretty good. The details on the skin look accurate, and the oversized nature of it amuses me. It's pretty impressive getting something like this in just a little over six hours of print time. So that's Thing, everyone. Let's give them a big, uh, a big hand. Next, I wanted to test the printer's ability to print abrasive materials. So I grabbed a spool of Bamboo Lab PACF filament. It's a carbon fiber infused nylon. This kind of filament likes printing hot and it likes printing in a hot enclosure. And the X-Max 3 can meet both of those requirements. Before printing, I switched to the spare hot end with the hardened steel nozzle installed. So yes, this model is just a cube, but I couldn't think what I wanted to print, and I just wanted to see if it was even going to work. This is sliced with the same settings I've been using, 0.2 millimeter fine. And this 32.5 millimeter cube printed in just 22 minutes, and it's got a really cool texture to it. The only issue is that the top layer looks a little rough. I feel like that last layer or two could have benefited from printing slower. The last print is this Caladragon, designed by McGuybeer, scaled to the full build volume and printed in a rainbow PLA filament. But this is no ordinary rainbow PLA filament, it's glow-in-the-dark PLA filament. I waited until I had the hardened steel nozzle on the printer before I did this one, because like carbon fiber filament, glow-in-the-dark filament is abrasive and will wear out a regular nozzle. I got this filament for Christmas and I wanted to try it out. This model took almost 14 hours to print, and that was with using lightning infill. But it's the largest Caladragon I've ever printed. Hey, if you're enjoying this video or you just like 3D printing stuff in general, a subscribe would really make my day. That lets me know that I'm making content you enjoy and you want to see more like it. Thanks! And now it's time to go over the things that I like and don't like about the printer, starting with the things that I like. First, I like the build volume. It's pretty spacious, and it puts it in the helmet class of 3D printers. You'll definitely be able to fit something like a Mandalorian helmet on the bed as a single piece print. I also appreciate the printing speed. The flex plate is nice, and I like the textured surface because that texture transfers to the prints. The bed probe samples 81 points in a 9x9 grid, and that works great. The more probing points the printer samples, the more accurate the mesh will be. And I've gotten pretty good first layers from the printer. I found the touch screen easy to use to control the printer, load and unload filament, and select files to print. I like Brucia Slicer, so I think using it as a base for Chidi Slicer was an interesting choice. The previous Chidi Slicer was based on Cura. Chidi Tech has added a built-in web viewer to Prusa Slicer to allow interaction with Clipper's fluid user interface right in the slicer without having to bounce out to a web browser. That's pretty cool. 
They also added a tab with their user guides and stuff, which is probably using that same web viewer. But again, it's nice having all that stuff in one place. Well, now, here are the things that I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of the spool on the back of the printer, particularly for larger printers like this. It's just really awkward trying to reach behind there to load or unload filament and get the spool onto or off of the spool holder. And if you're using that dry box, you're going to have to rotate the entire printer to access it. Definitely a pain point with the rear feed design. Now, about the heated chamber. With the printer idle, I set the chamber to its maximum temperature, 65 degrees Celsius, using the on-screen controls. After more than an hour, the temperature in the center of the chamber measured just under 50 degrees, even though the printer's screen said the chamber was at 65 degrees. And at the top of the chamber, my measurement showed it was a little over 53 degrees. I suspect that when printing high temp materials, the combination of high bed temperatures and the chamber heater can get the chamber up to the 65 degree point, but the chamber heater alone can't quite get there. So there's not a whole lot in the don't like list, but here's where I think the printer could be improved a little bit. With regard to the rear feeding of filament, I noticed that the input of the filament runout sensor has a coupler on it for PTFE tubing. So I connected a length of tubing to that and I put a printed spool holder next to the printer. Now I can just feed the filament into that tubing from the side and I don't have to mess with the back of the printer at all. That said, I know older Cheaty Tech printers had a spool holder thing that popped up from the top back edge of the printer. So that sort of arrangement, along with the PTFE tubing to guide the filament into the printer, might be something for Cheaty Tech to revisit. It may not look as clean and professional as having the filament spool completely hidden, but it would be a nice quality of life improvement and make using the printer a little easier. Next, while the bed probe works great, Having to manually adjust the Z offset is a little bit of a miss. Z offset is the difference in height between where the bed probe is triggered by touching the bed and where the nozzle touches the bed. Other printers can use the nozzle itself as a bed probe, so it would be cool if the XMAX 3 did that too. That way, the Z offset would always be zero, and you wouldn't even have to think about it. So, let's wrap up. Overall, I like this printer with its big build volume, fast printing speed, and good printing quality. I printed with various PLA filaments, including an abrasive glow-in-the-dark one, as well as printing with carbon fiber nylon filament. And the printer did a good job with everything I threw at it. I think for the current sub-$900 price tag, it's a pretty good deal. If you're looking for a fast, enclosed, clipper-based printer, with good slicer integration, wired and wireless network options, and that's capable of printing big things, you might want to put this one on your list. There are links in the description if you're interested. So that's the Cheaty Tech XMAX 3. Thanks again to Cheaty Tech for sending this over so I could show it to you. And big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future ones. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool.